Good morning and welcome to Travis Baptist this morning. It's good to have Patty healed up enough to, to be back amongst, amongst us, and we definitely thank Lori for filling in for these past several weeks. We're here to worship the Lord, so let's go ahead and stand as we sing, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Today's scripture reading is from Deuteronomy 26, 18 through 19. Today you have proclaimed the Lord to be your God, and that you will walk in his ways and keep his statutes, his commandments, and his judgments, and that you will obey his voice. <coughs> And that he will set you high above all nations which he has made in praise, in name, and in honor. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we love you, we thank you, we praise you. You are a good God. In a world of turmoil, in a world of chaos, in a world of war, you still bring peace. You still bring serenity. You still calm our hearts and lift up our heads and encourage us. With all that's going on, Lord, you're still our God, and we are your people. And you've made promises to us, Lord, that keep us going every day. Promises of love, promises of, of security, promises that, that you will be with us always, even to the ends of the earth. So, Lord, today we thank you for this. We pray, Lord, that you will cleanse us, that you will draw us close, that you will let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in our hearts, in this church, and across the globe, especially in the area of the Ukraine, Lord, that you would bless and, and, and be present and work your will out. Just as you are with each of us, we pray also for that nation that your will be done. God, we're praying for the families that have lost. We are praying for those that have, are in terror right now, that just your peace would come upon them. And remind each of us, Lord, that it could happen to us. Keep us ever thankful and reminding that the freedom we have and the security we have in this country is a gift. And Lord, it's not to be taken for granted. We praise you for this. But we pray, God, that we'll be able to reach the nations, that we'll be able to be all that you've called us to be. Thank you for all that you do. In the name of Christ, we say it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and you can be seated. We are glad you're here with us this morning. Um, and uh, got several things coming up and things happening around us. I um, want to remind you, first of all, we will be having the Senior Adult Fellowship. It will be Tuesday morning at 930 over in the parlor. Please keep that in mind. We will have our regular Wednesday schedule of Awana at 6.20 and the prayer meeting Bible study for the adults at 6.30. Um, 
The big news is next Sunday, you lose an hour of sleep. It's spring forward time, so when you go to bed Saturday, you gotta turn the clocks forward one hour. So you're like me and you go to bed at 9.30, it's suddenly 10.30 and you've lost an hour of sleep. That means 6.30 is gonna come at 5.30 and you're just messed up from there, or 7.30, or anyway, you're messed up from there on out, okay? So just brace yourself, take naps every night when you come home from work this week, um, get a little bit extra sleep in because it all changes next Saturday night, okay? Please keep that in mind because we will be here Sunday morning at the usual time, all right? Um, next week also uh, is going to be spring break, not starting tomorrow, but the week after, the beginning the time changes on the 13th, then spring break starts the 14th. We will not be having Wednesday services during spring break while the kids are out of school. That includes both the Awana and the Bible study. Um, on the 20th, uh, we're going to have our regular scheduled service. There's also a deacon's meeting, but also on the 20th is uh, that evening at 6 p.m. We're going to have a special fellowship time. We want to come in here for about half an hour at 6 o'clock, and we'll have a pick your favorite hymn night. And Dale will lead us in. And then after about a half hour of that, we're going to go over to the fellowship. We're going to enjoy sandwiches, chips, and dip and sign some greeting cards and just have a good time of fellowship that Sunday night. That'll be on March the 20th, okay? We do thank those of you who have been filling out or who have already filled out the survey. Please, if you have not done so, please do it. It really helps us out. We're going to be doing it through the end of March, so we still got a couple weeks um, uh, about that, okay? So all that is happening. We also want you to be in prayer. We're starting to make plans for another outreach like we did in December. Uh, for uh, families coming up on Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday will be about the 10th of April, I believe, the Sunday before Easter. So please be in prayer about that. We'll be doing another thing with the hot dog lunch and, and uh, inviting the families and their kids. And so please be praying for that and how you can help, okay? Um, giving you just a heads up on that. Um, I'm having a procedure done tomorrow, uh, and so I will be out of the office. I'll be back on Tuesday, so... Um, just keep us in your prayers for that. All righty. And uh, if you're here for the first time or the first time in a long time, our bulletin here has a cover and there's a little flap on it. And if you're here for the first time, it's a good way to let us know about you. You fill this out, you tear it right off and drop it in the offering plate. We can get you more information about the church. Also, uh, you can update your information uh, with us, new emails, phone numbers, such things as that. Also, prayer requests, and uh, just drop them in one of the offering plates around the room, okay? So let us take this opportunity now to go and welcome one another into the Lord's house.
If we would make it back to our places, we will continue. We will be standing at our places. As we sing, we are marching to Zion. At this time, the children may be excused to head up to Children's Church. As they head out, the recitals sing, Brethren, we have met to worship. to have our family prayer time, the time we take to lift our burdens up before the Lord, to pour out our hearts to Him, to lift up the people of Ukraine, the people of uh, surrounding nations who are trying to care for refugees, to lift up the families who have lost loved ones during this war. It's time for us to also pray for our, ourselves, our own country, how we're going to pay for gas this week and all those other issues that are coming up. We know that times are not great right now, but our God is still good. So let's open up to him, and he'll walk us through this every step of the way. Maybe you're struggling with something extra. Maybe you're just really burdened about something. The altar is open if you wish to come and pray up here. 
uh, one of our deacons will be up here to pray with you if you need someone. And, uh, but we encourage you to take this time to bow your head and connect with the Lord. Tell him everything from top to bottom what's going on. Let's pray. Father in heaven, you alone are God. There is none beside you. There is none like you. There is none your equal. And despite that greatness, you love each and every one of us. And that's what truly makes you great. That you would consider sinners like us, failures like we are, imperfect to say the least. And yet you never give up on us. Your mercy extends forever. Your strength never fails. So we ask you, Lord, to clean our hearts. Forgive us of our sin. The many ways we fail you, the many ways we ignore you, the many ways we disobey and rebel and defy you. Forgive us. We are an ignorant people. And we live so often oblivious to how wonderful you are. So please, Lord, forgive us for getting wrapped up in ourselves and forgetting that you are our helper. Lord, we ask today for the people of Ukraine that you would protect, that you would end this war, that your will would be done. God, that there would be peace, that there would be healing, rebuilding, God, that those who have perpetrated this evil would be held to your justice. But most of all, that through all of this tragedy, that many would come to repentance, many would come to know Christ as Savior, realizing how precious life is. And while we think it's far away, we must remember that the nation of Russia is only seven miles away from our westernmost state. Only your hand protects us. Only your wisdom can guide us. So God, we're praying for it. We're praying for our children in the world they're growing up in. That you'd give them godliness and strength and wisdom. They have so many pressures and so many anxieties facing them, Lord. But they've also got you. So look down upon our children. Hold them tight. Never let go. And help them to see that the Lord God of heaven loves each and every one of them. We pray, Lord, for this church and our efforts to reach this community, that you would work through us in a much more mighty way as we get ready for Easter, as we get ready for Vacation Bible School, and as we get ready for First Blessing Shoes, Lord. God, work through Travis Baptist Church. Use these people greatly. Let your glory and your grace and your mercy shine through us. Help us to lift you up that you might draw all men to yourself. Father, we feel so unqualified, unable. But through you, all things are possible. With your strength, Lord, with your ability, use us. We pray, God, again. For all those who are struggling right now who just need a little bit of hope today, that today as we sing and as we hear your word, that their life would be encouraged. Remind us, Lord, how much we need each other. And we say each, all these things in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
join me in singing Sweet, Sweet Spirit. <laughs> stand at this time and if you have any uh, offering envelopes or communication cards that you need to drop in the the uh, offering plates be feel free at this time to, to jump out and drop them in uh, the plates that are around the uh, sanctuary at this time as we sing the church is one foundation <laughs> Father God, you are Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Master Designer, the Provider. You have blessed us so much and loved us so richly. And we can't just thank you enough, Lord, for all that you have given and done for us. We thank you for this time that we have to gather to worship you, to lift your name on high, Lord. I pray, Lord, that through our worship you are glorified. 
Through our worship, we are changed as we come face to face with you, Lord. I thank you for the freedom that we have to come before you, Lord, and to worship you. So often we take it for granted, Lord, and we see throughout the world those who are persecuted for just mentioning you. And I thank you, Lord, for this time that we have to, to bring back just part of the blessings that you have given us. And I ask, Lord, that you continue to, to use us in our community, that others may come to know you, to know your perfect love, to know everlasting life with you. And I ask, Lord, that you continue to guide us, protect us, and forgive us when we sin against you. For it's in your holy name we pray. Man, you can be seated. And um, one more announcement uh, is tomorrow evening, 6.30, we have a vacation Bible school meeting uh, over in the parlor. So please join us uh, for that 6.30 tomorrow evening. And then if you have your Bibles with you, we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 10. The book of Hebrews chapter 10. And uh, we're going to talk about today our church together. Our church as one, our church united, our church getting along with each other. We're going to read from Hebrews chapter 10. We're going to read verses 24 and 25 as we think about how wonderful it is that God brings us together. That we cannot do what he has called us to do on our own. All right? Hebrews chapter 10 verses 24 and 25. Would you stand please for the reading of God's word? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Let's pray. We love you, Father. We love our families and we love the family you've given us here at Travis. Help us, Lord, to share that love, to support each other, to move each other forward in life. That none of us are ever on our own, none of us are ever alone, but all of us together, Lord, we look just like you, the body of Christ. So help us to be everything you've created us to be. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and you can be seated. Um, looking at how we do church sometimes and being as we're Americans and we love our Lone Rangers and our individual heroes. We like to watch uh, Chuck Norris take on the whole army by himself. We love it when one cowboy can take care of all the Indians and vice versa. And, and we love the idea of that one solitary hero. But yet we are called so often to be reminded that no, we are a body. We are a fellowship. We are a group. God didn't mean you to be out there on your own. We read in our scripture reading this morning about in Deuteronomy as the people of Israel are getting ready to go in the promised land and God reminds them he didn't create a group of individuals. He didn't make them so that they could all just run around doing their own thing. He said he made myself a holy people, a group, all of us. We all believe, just like the old gospel songs say, if, if it was just me, if I was the only one that was going to repent and believe, Jesus still would have died on that cross for just me. I believe that. But that was never his intention. He wanted all of us. He wants as many as he can get. See, it's his will that none should perish, but that everyone should come to repentance. Why? God wants a big family. On that day in Revelation when we stand around the throne and we surround it, and people from every tongue, every nation, every color, every background as we're all gathered there singing his praises man that is what thrills his heart Amen. to have a lot of us it is good that you stand out there on the side of the road in your boat on the lake or in the bay and you're singing his praises but there's much value to be gathered with his people and sing his praises and pray and all those things why do we say that 
We as Baptists, we got a real basic belief, and one of those basic beliefs is the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three persons, one God. Not three gods, not three different facets of God, but three persons, one essence. I don't understand it either. That's okay. But what we want to say when we look at the Trinity and what ought to always come back to us is it's not just abstract theology. What the Trinity tells us is that Jesus never acted alone. Now that may bother some of us when we stop and think, but Jesus died on that cross alone. Look, man, Hebrews chapter 9 tells us the eternal spirit helped him get there. We saw when he was baptized Behold, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The Father's voice spoke, the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove, and in that we see that Jesus did, indeed, have the full backing of the Trinity as he began his ministry. The way God functions is a testimony to this truth that he is always relating to the other persons in the Trinity. When Jesus did what he did, it was because the Father led him to do it. Dr. Henry Cloud expresses how we experiencing God, we're connected with Him, and we're connected with His people. We are not self-sustaining. God is. But even then, what do you see in Jesus? You see Him praying to His Father. While He is the eternal Son of God, He is the creator of the universe. By Him, all things are held together. But when He was on this earth, and when He takes on human form, He was never outside of His Father. Always praying, always seeking, always obeying. So the example is there for us. You know, when he prayed in John 17, you know, Lord, I'm in you and you in them, and we're together. Always. This must be why it was so terrifying for him on the cross when suddenly the sky grew dark and he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In that moment that Jesus took upon him the sin of the world, the Father turning his back on him, maybe for moments, but maybe for what seemed like an eternity. Just like the child that has never been without its parents and is suddenly on their own, there was Jesus suddenly feeling that loneliness, that darkness of being all on your own. But then the, the Lord raised him from the dead, raised him into heaven. He sits at the right hand of the Father forevermore in perfect communion for all eternity. It's a picture for you and me to remember. We are not on our own. We are not disconnected. Yes, you can be out there in the mountains, on the lake, on the ocean, under the ocean, wherever you're at, on the job site, in school, and commune with God. But there is something special also about gathering together and communing with the family. And also, when crisis hits, oh, we need each other. When darkness comes over us, if you're like my family, our nearest relatives are about 250 miles away. We don't have y'all. We don't have nobody for an emergency. That's part of the purpose of the church. Is that for those of us who are without local band, the church is family to us. To lift us up, to hold us up, to carry us through all the different things we go through. So he tells us in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25, don't give up on your church. We are together in this church because of Jesus. The one thing that unites us above all else is Jesus Christ. This church is headed by Him. This church belongs to Him. Each one of us is a piece of His puzzle. Each one of us is, in a sense, a piece of His body, as the Bible tells us. That just like my body has toes and legs and feet and arms and fingers and spleens and all the other different parts I got, so also a church has many different members that make up one unit, one body. And who made us that way? It was Jesus. Our example is Jesus Christ. Again, when he started his ministry, there was the Father, there was the Spirit, there was Jesus. They were together. When he did his ministry, he had the twelve with him. Now, those 12 sometimes weren't lifting him up so much, they were dragging him down, but nonetheless, he never abandoned them, did he? He kept his, are you ready for this? He kept his church with him. Amen. That little group of disciples, they baptized, they proclaimed the gospel, they did just about everything a church does. 
So as they went with him, Jesus kept his church close. And he kept trying to grow it. He kept trying to reach out with it. When it came time getting close to his crucifixion, you'll remember Jesus went up on the mount with a couple members of his group. And they had what we call the transfiguration where he got that little extra booster shot of communion and recalling his glory with the Father and with the Spirit. Moses and Elijah also showed up just for good measure. We see also that when Jesus was tempted, he did not go out into that temptation alone. When he went out to meet the devil, he was not by himself. Luke tells us the Spirit led Jesus out into the wilderness to face the devil. And as soon as it was over, what happened? Jesus, exhausted after 40 days and 40 nights of fasting and being tempted by the devil with food and with power and with everything else, angels came and ministered to him. He was much higher than the angels, but boy, he could have used them right then in that moment. You remember when Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane. It seems like he's praying there alone. He's sweating drops of blood. He's crying out, Lord, take this cup from me. But the cup was not taken. Again, when his prayer was over, the angels came and kind of held him up a little bit because they had to get him through that night. Even Jesus needed the help of others. So he says to us, that is my example to you. As a human being, you need others. You can get out there on your own. You can watch church on the internet. You can stay separated from the body of Christ all you want to, but there's going to come a time where you're going to be helpless because you don't have the rest of the body holding you up. We need him, and we need each other. So Jesus left us the example that we're together because of him, and he's showing us, and I need to, You remember when we just mentioned the Gethsemane, and, and yes, the angels came and ministered to him, but you remember how disappointed Jesus was because he took his church with him out there to that garden. He took his disciples with him to pray and asked them to pray. Even those clumsy, failing disciples, he said, I need you all to be praying. And you remember his disappointment when he caught them all sleeping. He needed them in that moment. If Jesus needed, so do we. If Jesus needed his brothers and sisters, so do we. So together, we love. Together, notice we're in our passage. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. One of the purposes of our church is to encourage us in love. That this is a safe place, a loving place, a place you can come and find relief. <coughs> there are times we may have to hold your feet to the fire because of the consequences of your actions, but know that you are accepted and loved and wanted in the house of God, in the family of the Lord. Look out in the neighbors around us. What do we see inside these households? We see violence. We see divorce. We see abuse. We see pain. We see loneliness, depression, darkness, suicide. We see all of these factors weighing so heavily in the world around us. God's church is to be an alternative to that. That maybe it's hard at home, but you come to church and you just find a, a little tiny corner of heaven where I know I'm loved. I don't have to tell them everything that went on, but I know they're going to accept me. I know they're going to love me. I know they're going to pray for me. Maybe I'm saying something. Maybe I'm not. But I know that that's a place I can go and find safety. My Sunday school class, my Bible study group, the, the, the people on Wednesday night that I fellowship with, my Awana club, that there is a place there for me to get away from all of that. Why? Because there is love there. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love Look around this room. Every once in a while, you got to make the effort to stir up a little bit of love. We do the hugging, we do the handshaking. Do we follow up later on and say, hey, how are you doing, though? That every member in here would know that not only does the Lord love them, but this is a place where they will always find those who will reach out to them and lift them up. Together we love. Some of us are easier to love than others. Some of us are going through stuff we would never share with the others because we're afraid they wouldn't love us anymore. And yet here we're commanded, let us consider one another in order to stir up love. 
that no matter how dark, how bad, how alone you feel, at least at your church, it's a place of safety and love. Churches have often been compared to bars because at least in bars, people will let you talk without judgment. That's a sad thing. In God's house, you ought to be able to come in with no fear of how people look at you. Sometimes we carry our own guilt with us. Sometimes we walk in and the consequences of our action are weighing heavy on us. And we think everybody at church is judging me when actually nobody has and nobody knows what you did. But you're looking at it that way because the sin that's weighing heavy on your heart. But if we confess our sins, he'd be faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all that unrighteousness. So together we love. Together we have the responsibility for each and every one when they come in to reach out and lift them up. When people disappoint us, when people hurt us, remember, they're still part of our church. When people are not all that we wish they would be, remember, we still got to love them. It's just like family, because you've got a family member probably that's let you down once or twice. The family member that was not everything you hoped they'd be. The family member you can't count on all the time. Sometimes we're like that at church. Love's got to see past the hurt. How did Jesus love us? Even when we denied him three times in one night, the love did not stop. Can you love each other like that? Part of being so part of a church is to love. And then also together as a church, we serve. Let us stir up one another to love and good works. Stir one another up to love and also to good works. We are not saved by good works. They do not earn us a ticket into heaven. You cannot do enough good things to get accepted in the church. You just got to have faith in Jesus Christ. Whoever believes in him would not perish but have an everlasting life. To confess Jesus is your Savior, to publicly proclaim him in baptism makes you part of the church. But part of the reason for the church, as he tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, is that by grace you save through faith and not of yourselves, but we are destined for good works. That his purpose in saving us is that we would be to the praise of his glory. That people would see the way we live, the things we do, the way we help. Together we serve. Great examples are nearly everything we do around here. We could never teach as many people the Bible as we do when we set up our Sunday schools and our Awana clubs. When we all get together and have a place in the staff and in the helping of that, we get to make a lot of disciples than we would if we just tried to do it on our own. When we have vacation Bible school, we need so many people to help, and maybe we have a very low worker-to-student ratio, and that's so that we can help reach these kids with the gospel of Christ as we all do our part. When we do first blessing shoes, it takes a lot of help. We get a lot of shoes. We've got to get rid of 125, 150 pairs in one day and keep those people coming through and letting them know God loves us. It takes all of us to do these things. It takes people to give. It takes people to wash feet. It takes people to teach. It takes people to share. It takes people to prepare the meals. It takes all of us being Jesus to them. And then Monday comes, and you go to work, and you go to this appointment, and you go to school, and though we're apart, we're still serving together as we represent our Lord wherever it is we've gone. Stir each other up. Encourage each other. Church is not just checking off something off my to-do list. Church is something we become, we're a part of. We are not going to church. We are the church. When we leave here, we're still in church. Tuesday afternoon, 2 o'clock p.m., you'll still be in church. Because you're a part of this people. Serving Him every moment of the day. By doing good work, by treating retail workers respectfully, all those areas. Together we serve Jesus all week long. And then together, we encourage each other. We don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together like some folks do. I know it's been hard during this pandemic time. Some of you would like to come back and you're not able to yet. Some of you, for many reasons, are are still at home, but still know that you're a part of this church. To support it, to reach out to others, to minister where you're at and in your situation. 
because he says, don't forsake the assembling together, as is the manner of some, but exhort one another, encourage one another. Kick each other in the seat of the pants if we need to. Give us a little shove, get back out there in the fray. Don't be afraid of what the world might do to stop you. He says, exhort one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. Now, the word the day is kind of capitalized there in a lot of Bibles. The day means the coming of the Lord. As we get closer and closer, knowing our Lord is coming, we know we were commanded to love and to serve and to encourage and to follow Christ the whole time. As we get closer and closer, now as you wonder, is this war over in Europe? Is this thing with Ukraine? Is this the beginning of World War III? It could be. Is this the beginning of what could become the end days? It could be. Which means you better get on fire a little bit. And it might not be. But you probably ought to be sure, right? So you probably ought to get to encourage him and exhort him and serve him and love him. We don't know when our Lord will return. We don't need, oh, if this is a sign or if there will be more. But we do know this. He said he would. He said that it's appointed to each of us to live once and then, to, and, and, and then we die. And then it's the judgment. That there is coming a day to give account. But the glory of it is, is that those of us who are covered in the blood of Christ are not giving an account on why we ought to go to heaven. We're there already. We may have to give an account on what we've done with the opportunities he's giving us. If we fail, we're not sent to hell, but we are missing out on so much blessing he has in store for us. So here's the lesson. As a church, we encourage each other. We missed you. We don't want you to feel guilty. We don't want to hear excuse. We just want you to know when you're not here, part of us is gone. Guarantee, I got ten fingers. And I can function with nine of them, but I'd like this one back, right? I can function with one leg. A lot of people do, but you wish you had that other one back, don't you? Some people have very little use of their body, and you know they regret every moment that wishing they could have that use back. It's like that when you're gone. It's like that when you don't want to be a part of it. Part of the body is missing. Well, nobody called me. Nobody, blah, 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 blah. Look. Each one of us is called by Christ to show up and be a part. We do our best to show the love and encourage you, but let's also remember, my legs got a responsibility to swing out of bed in the morning. My arms got a responsibility to pull on that nightstand so I can get the rest of the way out. My head has a responsibility. It's got to get cleared up in a few minutes so I can start seeing so I don't run into things as I'm walking through the dark. Every one of us, we need our body to wake up and be a part and show up and do its place. Jesus says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. But instead, stir each other up. Remember why you're here. You're not just keeping an appointment on Sunday. You're here to stir up love and encourage each other in doing good things and moving forward and encouraging each other in our battle against the devil and in our battles against life and in the struggles we all go through. That's what church is about. Amen. It's about more than a sermon. The sermon's like the drink of water, maybe drinking water from a fire hose sometimes, but the drink of water to get you back out there. But the meat and potatoes is one another. You go through your New Testament, maybe if you've got a computer Bible or a good concordance, and you look up the phrase one another, and you will see dozens of times throughout the New Testament to love one another, encourage one another, bear one another's burdens, lift up each other, pray with one another. All these things we ought to do to share with one another, to, to make sure that we realize we are not lone rangers. We are not out here by ourselves. Some of us introverts wish we could shut the world out sometimes, but there comes a moment when you need your people. You need your family. You need the people of God. And God says, get ready because I want a community. A people called by my name. 
I will be your God and you will be my people. There will be a relationship here. Because, see, we say this a lot. Christianity is about a relationship with God. It is. That's what gets you in. And Christianity is also about a relationship with each other. God forbid you should be the only Christian in a country. You know, the only guy in the Bible who ever moaned and complained that I'm the only one, Lord, serving you was a guy named Elijah. And the Lord popped him on the side of the head and said, Look, Elijah, i got 7,000 people that have not bowed the knee to the false gods. You may feel like you're out there on your own, but God always has more people because that's always been his purpose and always his heart. You are part of the great community. The community of Travis, the community that stretches back 110 years. The bigger community of the church in America and the church throughout history. But you have something in common with the Apostle Paul or the Apostle Peter or whoever wrote the book of Hebrews. We serve the same God. We belong to the same Savior. We are indwelt by the same Holy Spirit. And one day we will all live in the same place. This is what it means to be together. And right now in this life, it's our job to give this world a little taste of heaven. That there is a place where you are loved. There is a place where you are cleansed. There is a place where you are encouraged. There is a place where you are lifted up a little bit to get you back in the fray. The church is a small picture of what God wants for his people. Because we're filled with sinners like me and like you, we fail that a lot. But let's do the best we can. Let's stir each other up to love and to do good works and to encourage each other, exhort each other. Because one day we're all going to go and be gathered with our Lord. And that's the day we're longing for. But today, where do you stand? Take a look. Is church a chore? Is being part of this body just, oh man, i got to go this week. They'll get on me if I don't go two weeks in a row. Or is it something where I get to see my people? In that Sunday school class, just getting to fellowship, just the little bit we have in there. Tuesday, the senior adult fellowship, just that time to play cards and talk and get caught up on what's going on, all those things. Does that light your fire a little bit? That you know this is going to be a good week because I get to be around some others. God saved a people. He wants to build his church, a group of us, to function together despite all our differences. Are you feeling you're a part of that? Pastor, I'm not able to do much right now. Okay, but you keep praying, and you keep seeking, and you find a little spot, and maybe God will open up a door, and you be reminded that every day when you're out there serving and working, that's a chance to be part of this church right there on your job. Everywhere you are, everywhere you go. I hope today you're stopping and thinking, I really do need my church, and I'm a part of it. It's not the building and the bricks and the air conditioners and the pews and the seats and any of that. My church is the people and the Spirit of God. It is headed up by Jesus Christ. And that's what I need most of all. Maybe today you're thinking, you know, I've been without a church home and maybe this is the place. Travis, we're going to sing in a moment. And when we sing, while we're singing, maybe you could come and say, I want to pray about being, becoming part of this church. Let's do that. Maybe you're sure about it. and You're saying, no, I know. I know this is the place for me. Whether you want to come by baptism or whether you want to come by statement from another church, come. Maybe you've been coming here for years, but you're realizing, you know, I really need to find a place. I really need to pray about what God wants me to do and how he wants me to do it. We have people who do everything from teaching classes and filling the pulpit and stepping up at the last minute to be the music leader on a Sunday to people who make quilts and people who send notes and people who make phone calls and doing all of that makes us a church. And not one of those jobs is less important than the others. Are you part of that? Let's pray.
Father, we love you and we thank you so much that you brought us together. And Lord, remind us that we're still in church when we leave the building. We're still serving you and encouraging and loving one another when we leave the building. That we would go to that job that we dread so much and the conflicts that happen so often there that we are in fact serving you in those moments. In fact, Lord, that's probably the strongest ministry we have is how we handle the challenges at work, the challenges at school with other students, with teachers. Lord, that all is a reflection of our relationship with you. So remind us, Lord, everywhere we go, every moment, we are yours. And Lord, help us because we know the desire of your heart is to have a big crowd on that day around your throne. Let this church, through our giving, through our reaching out, through our testimonies, reach out to other people and bring them into your kingdom. And your kingdom is so big, Lord. And it's been going on for thousands of years, and it's such a joy to know we're a small piece of it, but an important piece, because we're yours. Reach out to everyone here this morning, Lord. Let them know how much you love them. Let them know how valuable their service is to you. And we say all these things in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So we're going to have a song. While we sing, maybe you want to come and pray. Maybe you want to come and act on what we've talked about and come and tell you, say, Pastor, yeah, I want to start being considered about being part of this church. I want to move forward in my faith, Lord. And let me pray with you about that. Maybe you're someone here and you're, for the first time, you're saying, I never knew Jesus loved me this much. And you want to come to know him as Savior. We invite you to do that. Maybe you just want to come and say, Pastor, pray for me. My, my tank is empty. I'm worn out. I don't know what I'm doing. I just need my brothers and sisters to lift me up. Come on then. As we sing, let's all stand and give you an opportunity to come if you wish. As we sing, number 326, softly and tenderly, would you come? Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Thank you all so much for being part of our service today. Remember to lift each other up in prayer and to encourage one another. And uh, uh, again, uh, tomorrow night, 6.30, will be the Vacation Bible School meeting in the parlor. Uh, Tuesday, we have the Senior Adult Fellowship. I'm going to be out of the office all day tomorrow. 
So pray for us. And Julio Garcia, would you dismiss us in prayer, please, sir? Uh, church, please pray, pray with me. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you, dear Lord. Thank you for your love and your mercy, Father. Thank you for bringing us together here in one spirit, dear Lord. Just pray that you be with each and every one of us and put a hedge of protection over each and every one of us, Father. And may we just look to your word, Father, so we can recognize that these look like the end times. There's been rumors of wars. There's been hate. There's been so many things that you, predict, you told us would happen, and they're happening. We just pray that you bless us and, and just comfort our hearts and our spirits, knowing that you're in control of all things. Forgive us our sins, Father. We also pray for our pastor who's going through the procedure tomorrow. Just be with him, watch over him, bless him, and help us to get home safely, Father. Thank you again for all you do. We ask all these things in the, the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.